everyone, it's me, Ex-Canadensis, and today's video is going to be an unboxing and review of Barbie as Odette from Barbie of Swan Lake, and I'm really excited about this one. This was a childhood doll for me that I've been trying to replace for years, but I have never found her secondhand in a condition that was acceptable to me, at a price that was acceptable to me. I think I actually have three of these out of box. None of them have the necklace, the crown, the wings, the shoes, so I am so excited to have her. Um, I also wanted to make clear that this one I purchased with the sole intent of unboxing. She was actually very affordable. I only paid $13 for her. And as you can see, her box is beyond repair. It would be acceptable to display, but you know, it's not worth leaving her in box when she could be a pristine doll out of box. And then I also wanted to make clear that I actually have one in basically brand new, perfect condition, straight off the shelf condition from a previous slot that I purchased. So just know she's being unboxed for a reason. There is some dry rot to this one that isn't present on this one, but you know. Anyway, let's get her out this of the This is really weird because I had this doll as a kid, um, but my mom most likely unboxed her for me because the only toys I ever remember unboxing myself as a kid were my um, Littles Pet Shops, so. And only like very late in the game. So I imagine my mom did it for me, but it's kind of cool. This is gonna be, oh, and her shoe was loose in the box, like, because the rubber band's dry rotted after all this time. What I'm most excited about with her are the wings, because I remember as a kid loving the wings on this doll. I wasn't big into dolls, so unfortunately my childhood dolls all went at a garage sale and I didn't really make much of a scene about it. I was sad about it though. Um, and I do have a lot of my childhood dolls still, but um, not my Odette, which is a shame. So I just have to cut a bunch of ties. I still want to be super careful, even though there's no real reason to be. Oh my gosh. I I love that they draw the pictures. Some companies and some doll lines still do it, but like, isn't that fun that they like went through all the trouble to draw all of these things? It's so fun. All right. Now we have to undo these ties. Sorry, normally I time lapse these parts of my videos, but because this is a doll from almost 20 years ago, I thought it would be fun to kind of sit down and unbox her together. <laughs> and I'm so excited. All right, this. See, sometimes these um, sewn in hair strips are super easy to get out like that. And then other times they're nearly impossible. Like um, I unboxed a uh, birthstone aqua green barbie and it was an actual nightmare but here it was super easy and on g3 my little ponies i've undone a few of the hair strips that they sometimes have they are the most satisfying feeling in the world to unbox so um you never know but certain dolls it is actually traumatic and you feel like you're going to rip all of the doll's hair out before you get there. All right, looks like we have everything. So now she should lift right out of the box. Of course, the... There we go. All right, so that's the backing. We're losing a ton of glitter onto the table here. And we just have to take off all of the metal that's still on her. I hope the wings don't light up. I imagine they're not going to. And I'm going to ha have to replace the batteries, obviously. Um, because it's been so long. So let's see. Interesting that there's cardboard in place when she's packaged. Okay, so there's no battery tab or anything. Maybe she didn't come with batteries in the first place. Uh, I have no idea. I do remember these lighting up when I was a kid and thinking it was super cool. I love this hair. Oh my gosh. Okay, definitely needs some work, but I will say before I set her up for this review, this doll has a pretty severe misplacement on her eyes and I don't know if you can tell but it's enough to bother me so I can't decide if I'm actually gonna rip this uh, dry rotted rubber band off I'd rather it not melt into her skin um, unfortunately all of the rubber bands have dry rotted uh, ooh that's like sticky usually they're like dry ooh. Um, she's gonna have to get a little wash before she goes on permanent display cuz ew, they're like gooey I've never had that before. Ew. Okay, um, anyway, I'm probably going to put the outfit on a different Odette doll that I have just because of how messed up her eye placement is. I spent some time scrubbing her down, getting all of the sticky rubber band gunk off of her. Hopefully we don't find any more stubborn spots. They were hiding all over the place, honestly. Um, I brushed her hair out. I will say that this doll is a huge testament to how 
dolls in box destroy themselves over time. When you have a doll out of box, you can address things like the rubber band deterioration before it gets bad, you can fix hair issues, you can you can just you can address things a lot more easily and often dolls in box will have these issues exacerbated and I'm not sure why that is to be honest but um often I find dolls in box are sticky, they get mildewy a lot faster. There's just lots of different things. Um this isn't to say that leaving your dolls in box is not a good option. It's just that if you keep them in box, you really need to watch them. I think probably part of the reason is that people who keep the dolls in box often stick them in a box in their garage or in their basement or in their attic or something, and that might explain it, but I'm not really sure. But regardless of all of that, Odette is now out of the box, and I'm very grateful that she was in the box for all this time because it meant that I got to have her in perfect, complete condition, even with those concerns in mind. Um, I do not have access to the button cell batteries, nor do I like to put batteries in my dolls in general, so we're not going to be showing the light up feature that she has, but this doll has been out for two decades. Like, I promise there are videos of that out there. Um, maybe someday I can do a video of all of my Barbie movie dolls gimmicks being used. I don't know. Um, I just don't really like putting batteries in things. I don't really like dealing with batteries or worrying about issues with batteries. I do need to open her up and get her batteries out, but um, I tried and she's not working right now. Um, the only big flaw right now with her is that the rubber bands around these are what kept them tighter so that they fit around her arms so these are super loose but other than that she's perfect oh, the nostalgia of having them as a child and the movies that i love are huge draws to these dolls for me the faces are another huge one which is why i think i'm probably going to have to swap all of these accessories onto a different odette doll that i have this is what mine's face looks like and you can really see the depression of where her eye is supposed to be. This one is placed correctly, this one is not. This happens sometimes and it's no big deal. And if you look here, this one is placed correctly. I do believe this one might actually be a variant of the makeup of some sort, or maybe the misplacement is so severe on this one. Um, but as you can see, they just look like two completely different dolls. Um, so I thought I would show you that just to say like, <laughs> sometimes, Dolls are misplaced. Um, normally, dolls that are misplaced like this, if I have two, I will leave the misplaced one in box because you're going to be looking at the out-of-box one a lot more closely, but because the box was destroyed on one and perfect on the other, I didn't really have much of a choice on that regard. I did check the bottom of the box, and both of the dolls are made in China. I'll show you all of this just in case this information is relevant to you. So you can see the made in China right there. Despite her facial features being a bit off, we can still describe what they were intended to look like. If we um, cover this half especially, you can see what is kind of meant to be. Um, so she has pink lips, blue eyeshadow in the lid, and then pink coming out just a little bit, and it does come around to the bottom of the eye as well. And I love the eyelid or the eyelash style as well. She has light brown eyebrows and a light dusting of blush on her. I really love when dolls have blush on them. I wish it was... um more common. I feel like it isn't. It adds so much life to the face. Unfortunately, this one, again, is a bit misplaced, and honestly, I can't name face sculpts to save my life, even if it's obvious, so you guys can uh, put that in the comments if you think uh, you know. Her crown is so gorgeous. It is the head of a swan with a little rhinestone and then little wings that are swirly and fun and have blue and purple and pink absolutely gorgeous piece and this piece for some reason secondhand has been such a pain for me to find so that was a big draw to getting one in box to unbox and i just can't believe my luck in getting this one for the price that i did by the way i found her at a store called second and charles which is a used bookstore somehow um her hair i believe it's saran um similar to most other barbies from this era it's really really soft and light and airy in the box, it's very flat, even though her hair is kind of supposed to be curled. I did brush this out with a metal brush and some water. Um, it's a bit dry, though, so I'm going to be conditioning it and using some warm water on it to fluff it back up. And if you guys would like, a, like to see a video of me refreshing her, then I would be happy to do that. I do have some other Barbie movie dolls that need to be done, so, you know, I can do that with them. And then we're going to set her hair aside so that we can look at... Her wings, which were another huge draw to this doll for me. You would think these would be common secondhand, even um, separated from the doll, but I've been having a lot of trouble finding them for a decent price. Like, I'm not going to spend more on the wings than I would on the doll, you know? Also, excuse this, this is how I have her on a stand. I had to stick it through the hole in her skirt. Anyways, so there's a button here that when you press the button, the light 
comes through the doll's back. This is not an electronic piece. The electronics are in the back of the doll. Um, but anyway, you hold this button down and then the lights will shine through the wings. And the wings go down and up. And now that I'm seeing them on the actual doll, I definitely do remember these from when I was a kid. Um, really, really fun. Woo! <laughs> I love the the gimmicks they would always do for the Barbie movie dolls. It's so, so, so fun. So cute. Moving down, we can look at the chest portion of this outfit. Okay, so I have to say that even though I know the movie characters are designed exclusively to create dolls, they are Barbie movies made to sell dolls. The execution of this dress is very impressive. And I say this as someone who has many Barbie movie dolls for many different Barbie movies. This particular one is really, really impressive compared to the detailed movie character. Um, I think this dress is really awesome. It is one of the earlier ones, so I imagine uh, they were being a lot more faithful to the dolls at the time when they were designing the movie versus the doll. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I just think this is awesome. I love that the necklace and the crown both were molded in a pink pearly plastic. Well, this one was probably white with painted pearly material. I don't know. Um, but it's really, really gorgeous. And then there's more of a matte paint for the gem. It might be slightly pearly, but since it's such a small area, I'm not 100% sure. The dress bodice is so nice. So underneath the little feather portion, we just have this little piece, and I really like that piece. It acts as like a modesty panel, but also really helps keep the structure of the dress together really nicely. I love that this fabric is stiff enough to actually stand up. I have several of this dress that I have gotten secondhand over the years, and even in bad condition, these tend to stay up, which is really awesome. And these are printed fabric, but they have a layer of glitter on them that adds a lot of dimension. And I think the effect is really, really nice. It really looks like feathers, which is exactly what they were going for, of course. And then I love the material that they made this out of. I have absolutely zero idea what this material is. It has the... Uh, appearance of cellophane. I know it's not cellophane, like it's not even related to cellophane, but it has that similar like tinselly look to it. It's very pretty. And the construction is really nice too. I love the decorative stitching, if this is even decorative. I assume this is also to attach this, but the way it looks is very decorative and pretty. And then the boning, which doesn't act as boning necessarily. I think it is just there to be decorative, but the, the dress is pretty fitted. Um, and then it's also very fitted on the sides as well. And then she also has these big sleeve poofs. Unfortunately, they are made with rubber bands instead of some kind of elastic fabric material. They're made out of elastic rubber bands. So, you know, over time those melted or dry rotted or whatever. And that probably happens to the vast majority of these dolls in existence. So these are super loose now, which I imagine is why they are nearly impossible to find secondhand. I gave up on finding them, to be honest. I already had the doll in box, so I was like, at least I'll have one complete. So I'm so grateful that I got her in box. I have just, I can't stop raving about how unbelievably grateful I am to have found her uh, when I did, because I've been really wanting an Odette, just like the one I had as a kid. Um, And these are lovely. They're made out of organza, and there's a blue and pink layer. They're overall pretty simple. They're not hemmed or anything. They're just a kind of shredded fabric, but it's really beautiful, and I love the subtle glitter throughout, and the color matching between the paint, the actual dress fabric, and the organza is really, really great, which it had to be because of the skirt. Other than these gorgeous feathers, the rest of the skirt is made out of two layers of a netted material. The blue on top is super sparkly, and the pink on the bottom is not. Uh, this does shed glitter pretty... Not bad necessarily, but it does shed glitter, so you'll probably leave with a bunch of shimmer on your hand, which is amazing for me. I don't mind, but I know some people hate that. And then this layer is just simple fabric. I have no idea what to call it. It's very pearly. I like it a lot. And then from packaging, there's actually tissue paper that holds her skirt open, and I'm not going to take that out because I really like that. And then these shoes are driving me crazy. I remember the look of these from when I was a kid, but I don't remember having them for very long, so they must have gone missing pretty quickly. Um, I cannot get these to stay on the doll to save my life, and it seems like even in box with this doll having rubber bands around her shoes, they couldn't even stay on. It helps that the stand that I'm using is not ideal for her um, because it's supposed to be a waist-hugging stand and I'm using it on her thighs. I actually just slipped it right off of her. Um, unfortunately, you can't clip a stand to her waist because she has this on. So a saddle stand would work better, but she does not come with one. This is a stand that I bought off of Amazon. Anyways, 
This is what the shoes look like. I think they're beautiful. I love that they use that pink pearly plastic again. They're much squishier though. They're made out of a very squishy material, but I think that's their downfall because if you look, any type of play will make these shoes pop right off the doll and like, ah, that's not even that much pressure and they just come right off. It's not great, but they are very cute and they do seem to have fixed this pretty fast because the other Barbie dolls that I have that have similarly shaped like ballet point shoes are much better at staying on. I like the little bows molded on and I like the very realistic folds along the I don't remember what this piece of the shoe is called but the the hard piece that's on the bottom of the shoe that the dancers have to crack in half when they're preparing their shoes um it's very very pretty love the detailing and unfortunately she doesn't really have any kind of crinoline under here like you would kind of hope that she would um, so you have to leave this tissue paper in if you want it to stay super poofy. Although the skirt is stiff enough where it keeps its shape decently well on its That's own. That's it for this review. I'm so excited that I was able to score both of these dolls. I was so excited when I got the inbox one last year and it was so difficult for me to keep her in the box, but I knew if I waited and was patient, I would get one out of box that would be perfect. And although this one isn't perfect, I have several others out of box that I can switch around to make sure that this doll has um, her perfect face. Unfortunately, this one was misprinted, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to have these. And I wanted to include a bit at the end here because, sorry, her stand is not great. I wanted to include a bit at the end here because these dolls right now are, and most dolls and collectibles in general, are very inflated in their cost because there's currently kind of a collector bubble in terms of the collecting market for things. So you, if you were to look up this doll's price today, you would be absolutely speechless. I've been a doll collector for a decade. This doll only very recently got expensive. You could get her pretty much any day for under $50, even just a couple of years ago. I will say that both of these dolls, to be fully transparent, I got this one for $25 off of Facebook Marketplace last year, early last year, and I got this one for $13 from that Second and Charles store that I told you guys about earlier. If you wait and you search and you expose yourself to the most possible chances to find these dolls, you will find them for a price that is fair to you. For me, with my doll collection, and I have... I'm currently doing an inventory of my dolls, and I'm pretty sure I have around 2,000, possibly more dolls. Uh, I very seldom pay over retail. The vast majority of the time I pay right at retail, or even half, or a dollar each for the dolls, you know? I, I try my absolute best to buy at retail, which makes it a little difficult to collect these dolls that are sought after, or when I want to buy some dolls in box, but... It's possible, is what I'm trying to say here. I have quite a few Barbie movie dolls. I'm very happy with the ones that I have. I'd like to add more to my collection over time, but the collection that I have now makes me extremely happy, and these both are going to be absolutely beautiful on display together, and I'm so excited about it. I just wanted to say that even though these dolls are kind of considered, like, luxurious, like, nostalgia, like, um in vogue to have right now. I promise they're not as unattainable as people make them seem. They're not these hot commodities that are super rare and worth a ton of money. If if I'm being honest, Barbies from the 90s and 2000s are some of the least valuable collectibles, specifically Playline or like collectible Playline. Collectible Playline being ones like this or the ones that you would find on shelves like Holiday Barbies that are collectible, but they are not really, they're marketed more towards kids. Um, well, they're marketed as like a keepsake that you give to your kid, but they don't necessarily play with. Um, these are some of the least collect, like, um, least valuable or rare dolls. And I'm not saying that that makes them any less special. I love them. What I'm saying is they were extremely over collected. That was an era when people were noticing that 60s and 70s Barbies were kind of a hot commodity. The same thing happened with Star Wars in the 90s. People were noticing that the older iteration of Star Wars toys were worth money, so they were hoarding a bunch in box in pristine condition so that they could turn around and sell them, uh, and that caused a huge market crash, and you can get any 90s Star Wars toy for a dollar today. You can find 90s and early 2000s Barbies for $10 each at antique malls very commonly, Trust me when I say, although these dolls are very sought after and people are actively looking for them, 
you're not going to have that hard of a time finding them, I promise, um, if you if you take the time to actually look for them. But if you don't feel like doing that, you can spend the eBay prices, that's fine. It just depends on your values, right? For me, if I can get the doll like I did for $10, I'd rather that than spend like $80 on her on eBay out of box, because that's ridiculous. Um, anyway, I hope this was a fun video, helpful in some way, if that's what you were looking for, or just, you know. Uh, looking forward to doing more Barbie reviews like this. I think it's very fun. Oh my gosh, look how cute that prototype is. Wow. Her face is different and everything. That is a really beautiful prototype doll. Um, I never really looked closely. I had this one as a kid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye!